Good morning and welcome to the Kingdom Seekers radio broadcast where Jesus is Lord. Well, we praise God for another day, for another privilege and glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. We had a wonderful weekend. God has blessed us to see another day, a day we've never seen before, May 11th, 2015. He has granted us this day and we're going to take full advantage of it. We're going to trust him to illuminate us, to give us a word from heaven, a rhema word to deal with our situation, to feed our spirit, renew our minds, heal our body, to look to the Lord, our shepherd, to meet every need. What a wonderful God we serve. I have a wonderful word for you today. And this word is designed this week for the next two days to get you operating in optimum performance, optimum performance, where, you, where you're functioning the way God designed you to function where you're doing well in your marriage, well in your business. See, a lot of times we get so focused on, there's nothing wrong with it per se, so focused on the heaven thing, when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven. And that's great. We thank God for the precious blood of Jesus that has written our names in the land's book of life. But folks, we still have a job to do on earth. We still have jobs. We have ministries. We have children to take care of. We, we have vocations. God has a calling on our life. We have gifts. We have a purpose in life. The Bible says that God says, I know the plans or the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Plans of good and are not of evil to give you a hope and a future. The Apostle Paul backed that up in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. He went on to say, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained or predestined for us to do. So we were saved for a purpose. God has some stuff he wants us to do before we get to heaven. And in order to do that, I believe it's imperative that we're operating in optimum performance. The optimum form, that we're doing our very best for the kingdom of God. Where, where it's no longer all about me and my house and my car and my home and my clothes and me, me, me. No, where, where we have the vision of Jesus, the vision of God worldwide salvation. I mean, everybody get to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And if we're not the ones going, we're doing something to get people sent out into the world. Like supporting World Power Gospel Radio. My name is Dr. Garen Gatling. Such a pleasure to be with you this morning. I am under a great man of God, Bishop and Dr. Glenn A. Staples. My bishop is having a wonderful annual spring conference this week. If you're in a D.C. metropolitan area, please get down to the Temple of Praise, 700 Southern Avenue, Southeast, Washington, D.C. That'll be this Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That's the, uh, the 13th, 14th, and 15th, I believe that's right. Uh, the first night on Wednesday night, my bishop himself, the presiding prelate of Temple of Praise International Fellowship of Churches, he'll be preaching and ministering on Wednesday evening at 730 Coming the next night will be Bishop Donald Wright. Yes, you heard me correctly. Bishop Donald Wright will be in the metropolitan area on Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m. And on Friday, to wrap things up, uh, Dr. and Pastor Shane Perry, wonderful young man, I believe he's out of California, coming to minister to the Temple of Praise. Folks, there's no reason if you're in the area not to get a word from heaven. This morning I was thinking about, there's some things that are only going to happen when I'm in my private time with the Lord. But at the same time, there are some things that are only going to happen where we're under that corporate anointing, where we get together as God's people. And it's, it's only going to happen when we get together. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, they were all with one accord in one place. That's when God moved mightily, one accord, one place. And we need to be there. So when God brings great men and women into, into your region and you have an opportunity to be there, be there. Find out what God is saying. Find out what God is doing. Your breakthrough is in your obedience. You have your, your press, being able to press past and get out to those meetings. Even if it's just one meeting, get out there and get you a word from God. The word of God is your life source. Amen. So that'll be Wednesday night. Bishop Glenn A. Staples will be ministering the word at 730. 700 Southern Avenue, Southeast Washington, D.C. Bishop Donald Wright coming behind him on Thursday night at 730. And then Pastor Shane Perry on Friday night to wrap things up. That's this week, May 13, 14 to 15. Temple of Praise. International Fellowship of Churches, presiding prelate, Bishop Glenn A. Staples, my bishop. God bless him. And real quickly, give honor to the apostle bless and you. Dr. Anthony T. Mays. You know who he is. He's the president and CEO of Breakthrough Bible College and Theological Seminary, as well as this great ministry you're listening to, World Power Gospel Radio, getting the gospel to the nation, being obedient to Mark chapter 16. Go into all the world yes. and preach. Glory to God. You know, when Jesus said that, the apostles had no clue what internet was. 
They had no clue what were, what was it world casting it's called. They had no clue what world casting was. What is that? They had no clue what world power gospel radio WPGR. What's that? They had no clue. But Jesus knew My God. that this day in the twenty first century there'd be an apostle by the name of Doctor Anthony T. Mays that would have a gospel radio station known as WPGR, and God's gonna bless you. For being obedient to that call. You're a real apostle. I tell everybody that's the only real apostle that I know. I know of others, but the one that I know face to face is the apostle and Dr. Anthony T. Mays. And I thank God for him. All right, let's pray and get into a word. You know how I do. I want you to pray for me that I hear the Spirit of God accurately, that I speak accurately. And I pray the same for you, that you would hear me accurately. Because, you know, I forgot who the uh, philosopher was that said that in order for people to order, in order for them to communicate properly, you have to first define terms. People, you can, you could say something, and you think people hear. You understand? They don't. That's why Jesus said, "He that has ears to hear, let him hear." Mm. When I walk into a barber shop and say, "I just saw a fox," what do you think of? So you know, if you're a car dealer, you thought about that old car thing Bovo used to make called uh. the fox. If you just got back from a hunting trip, you think about that fox that you almost got that scared your deer off. If you just if you're reading an Ebony magazine, you might be thinking about the woman on the last page. Amen. I mean, what do you hear when someone is speaking? When I say Jesus, what do you hear? When I say Holy Ghost, what do you hear? When I say optimum performance, what came to your mind? When I say abundant life, what are you hearing? Where are you? He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Here, the Spirit of God will help you do that, but you have to make up your mind to come with an open heart and a mind receptive to His Word, humbly, like we don't know anything. That's the importance of coming before God's Word like a little child, like, I don't know, show me. Grant me new revelation. Grant me a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Open up the eyes of our understanding. Help us today to see something we've never seen before. By the way, I started praying. Help us to see something today, Lord, that we've never seen before. New insight, new revelation. Enlighten us, Lord. Illuminate our thinking. Help us today as we dust off the, the, the dirt from yesterday. We're going to start this day new. We plead nothing but the blood of Jesus. Forgive us of our sin. As we minister the word, heal our physical bodies. We receive your word as our medicine. We expect you to supernaturally meet every need. You declared in your word that you are a shepherd, that we are the sheep of your pasture. You said that we hear your voice because we're your sheep. So we submit to that. You are our shepherd. We're not going to be in need. We trust you to meet every need today, to comfort us with your rod and your staff, to anoint us afresh with oil. Anoint us with the Holy Ghost. Help us to fulfill our call in life, our vocation in life, the purpose and the plans that you have for us, the pursuits that you have for us. We can't do it in our own strength. We need supernatural intervention. You told your servant, don't you depart from here till you receive power from on high. We're not leaving until we hear from you today, Lord. We need a word. We thank you for enlightenment today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I want you to remember that word, uh, optimum performance. Good success. In order to function properly, to have success in life, success in ministry, success in our marriages, success in everything we do and in everywhere we go. Optimum performance. Psalm 1, <coughs> blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Optimum performance. Third John. There's only one chapter there. We'll read verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about the success flow. F-L-O-W. Success flow. We're going to continue along that same track until the Spirit of God tells me otherwise. Today's subtopic will be perfect well-being. 
perfect well-being. So when we talk about the success flow, first and foremost, we're talking about success being uh, to excel to the highest place in any endeavor or a thing that you may desire. In other words, the accomplishment of your goals, the accomplishment of your objectives, the reaching of your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, the fulfillment of success. That's what we're talking about. Now, the actual Hebrew word for good success, according to Hebrews, uh, excuse me, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, it actually is translated to deal wisely in the affairs of life. To God, good success is you're able to, to deal wisely. It's the word prudence. You get the word prudence there. Um, the ability to maneuver and handle life in such a way where you win all the time, where you make good decisions, or what I like to call divinely directed decisions. Isn't that powerful? God wants us to operate in prudence, to deal wisely when it comes to our marriage. To deal wisely when it comes to our children. To deal wisely when it comes to our business. To deal wisely when it comes to our ministry. To deal wisely in every aspect of our life. And folks, that's a supernatural lifestyle. When you come to a place that no matter where you go, listen to me carefully. No matter what you do, it's in the Bible. I just read that. Joshua, he told him, no matter where you go, I'll see to it that you prosper. He said in Psalm 1, if a man or a woman will take my word seriously, don't walk in the way of the ungodly, don't stand in the way of sinners, don't sit in the seat of the scornful, but will delight himself or herself in my word. Another word, you get rooted and grounded in what I have to say about things. Take your counsel from me, saith the Lord. Get your, get your cue from me. Set, set your watch by my clock. Let me be the one that instructs you and leads you and guides you and trains you. I'll see to it that no matter where you go, you'll prosper. Folks, you'll get to a place that God can place you in Alaska, you'll prosper. In the jungles of Africa, you'll prosper. He can take, take you to New York, Delaware, Atlanta. Doesn't matter where you go. God said, if you will put my word first place in your life, I will see to it. Watch this, folks. This is the word of God. I'll see to it that you prosper. That's in the Bible. And so God wants us to come to a place that no matter where we go or whatever we do, we prosper. Now, we left off last week talking about that's a process. We're not talking about an overnight sensation. Success is not an overnight thing. Success is not an accident. Success doesn't drop on you like ripe cherries from a tree. Success doesn't come by tiptoeing to the two lips and skipping to the loo, my darling. There's a work that's involved. There's a work. Albeit it is a work of faith. It's a work of trusting in Him. It, it, it's a work of putting aside my own reasonings, my own ways, my own agenda, and trusting in Him. It's a process. doesn't happen overnight. There are some prerequisites or some things that are required beforehand. I have to meet certain conditions. And I'm not, ta I'm not talking about, oh, how can I say this? We know that this is a work of faith. Everything we receive from God is by faith, saved by grace through faith. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. All that stuff is by grace through faith. But that doesn't mean that, I, that I'm, uh, what's the right word? I'm absolved from things or I, I don't have to do anything. I have to work. There's some things that are required of me, some prerequisites, some things that are required before I can walk in the God kind of success, the God kind. And then one more quickly a review and then we'll move on. Principles. You, you, you and I are going to have to be men and women of principles. That's just the way it is. And by principle, I'm talking about we have to be willing to adhere or obey spiritual laws, like laws of faith, laws of sowing and reaping. You're not going to be successful and not be a sower. Forget that. <laughs> You're going to have to be a sower, a tither. There is no success outside of violating spiritual laws. Um, uh, adhere to natural laws. And follow a code of conduct. Yes, you heard me correctly. We come to a place where we're perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I'm not talking about self-righteousness. I'm not talking about holier than that. I'm not even talking about the kind of clothes you wear. I'm talking about what's going on inside of you, in your heart. There ought to, there ought to be the law of God written on your heart. Some things that you and I are just...